Hello, we have Jan, Mohammed, Jamie, and Antrenig, and myself, Michael. I'm sure others will trickle in. And Jamie, you have a review open to include include dot include options to jail.conf. I am curious if you've gotten the feedback you want and if that's looking like something that could drop into FreeBSD 14. Uh, yes, I think so. Um, there was the uh, the mention, could I make it so we don't have include loops? And yeah, I just haven't done that yet. Uh, but that, that's it. not going to be a hard thing to add. Um, and yes, the idea was it can definitely uh, go into 14. Jenny? It's, yeah. Yeah? And regarding include loops, uh, how do you identify uh, files uniquely? By real path using libc, or are you um, ruling out hard links uh, and use the um, file system and inode ID number? Yeah, that's what I'd probably go with is just, yeah, file system inode. Uh, the Actually, problem with that is that, uh, that if someone uses uh, hard links, that will have a false positive. Um, I don't consider it a false positive. I consider it a uh, true positive. They're the same file. Yes, but it's not a loop because the inclusion works by path, not by inode number. Mm, seems a little esoteric to me. You're still including the same file. And if you're including the same file, it'll have the same contents. It'll have the same loop. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, actually, I think you can have two files. Uh, sorry, you can have a single file with two paths, but the same yes. inode. Yes, that's a hard yes. thing. But it would have the same contents. It would set the same parameters. It would do exactly that's, the same thing. It uh, would behave as if you had included the same path name. But what about if it only appends two values? So using the plus equals operator. And I want to have uh, the value tried. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Suppose you want to include a file a certain number of times to append it. <laughs> yeah. I don't course, think that's we can completely honestly. take you know, into account every time that somebody might want to multiply include the same file without completely counting out any time someone might not want to do it. So yeah, but... you know, it might be the best sanity check is to give people the foot gun and say, you know, with, in, without so many words, don't use the foot gun. Don't yeah, include but... loops. If you recall that seems to be what every um... other program that takes configuration files does with their strategy is I've not, I, I looked through a few, I've not seen anything that checks for include file loops. It's just considered a minor yeah, problem, a config error that someone will catch the first time that they see it not doing anything and taking all the CPU. One of the solution I've found is that they have a recursion stack depth limit. And once you have reached the maximum include depth, which is normally a smallish number like 32 or something, once this recursion depth is reached, they will refuse and they suspect it loop, similar to how symlinks work. Even if the limit is usually higher there in the 256 range or something. Yeah, that's true. Could do that. That's that's easy. You don't need to worry about which files you have in that. Exactly. Like that. Just uh, let the user explore uh, an infinite subgraph up to a certain depth, and then once the uh, depth search search what is what you're essentially doing, if I remember your patch correctly, uh, has detected that the the subgraph is too deep. Uh, you just bail out and say sorry. Recursion limit exceeded. That's even simpler. And do you have a clear example of when you would want to source the same include multiple times? Um, the thing is that you, it's uh, all that common. Uh, it's just that it's not. There are reasonable semantics for it. An example I could come up with off the top of my head is a configuration file of common things for jail style foo and common things for jail style bar and inside different jails, you include different rule sets that way. Oh, of course, so having two uh, snippets um, just happen to contain the same thing that's trivial to produce. 
uh, let's say you just want to a set a value to a, cer a certain attribute of a jail to a certain value and two uh, of your basically flavors of jails you want to combine into one jail and they assign the same value to it over writing it and it's harmless. So, so a practical example is that you have two template definitions, one for a VNet jail, mm -hmm. that's about networking, and one for mm -hmm. a ZFS jail, which is about file systems. And you yeah, combine perfect. two and you want them to overlay Ooh. to make a third jail. However, you have to bear in mind that the device nodes um, slash dev, dev rules um, need to be, um, let me think here, they will need to be combined in some way that neither um, the jail nor the ZFS setting can actually do. You'll have to handle that directly as well. I think I mentioned that in the uh, comments. It's not a programming. In the, uh, I'm not writing a scripting tool here. And if people need infinite configurability, then they can. They are allowed to write their own jail tool. That's true. Sure. Yeah. I think I mentioned that situation though in the. Uh, comments on differential that yeah it wouldn't just be a uh, device inode tuple but a device inode jail tuple so you could con include the same yeah. file in multiple jails i don't see wanting to include the same file multiple times at the top level or include the same file multiple times in a single jail though i hadn't I considered the plus equals see, thing uh, so uh, you know that doesn't uh, take care of that one I can see this happening with clever uh, wildcard includes uh, and two level sim links to be, but um, the question is what's the desired behavior it's similar to uh, the diamond inheritance problem at that point. And there is no universal correct answer. I would say just limiting the recursion depth uh, to detect it quickly and then just explore this recursive uh, subgraph and uh, refuse once the maximum depth has been exceeded is the simplest uh, and most compatible solution. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds good. One thing that they don't, that the includes don't do that I would like to add, but it mm -hmm. takes a uh, good deal of work and planning that I haven't done yet is includes are absolute path names. You say, I am including this file and that's all. What I think a lot of people will want to do is include this jail name dot conf. You know, dollar you name dot do? conf. But you can't do that right now because the um, jail program has a very clear delineation. It parses and then it does variable substitution. And uh, let him finish. I, yeah, I, I would have to have it be able to go back and parse more with some variables substituted and not others, and then add to the variables substituted and I haven't planned all that out yet. Oh, so uh, oh. that was something was I wanted feature. to ask. So you can't uh, have um, variables inside the include patterns. Right. I mean, they can be in the include files, but they can't be in the include statement itself. And yes, that is definitely about, a missing feature. Um, how much work would it be to delay the uh, processing? So that uh, you do an include process it to completion, then the next one or uh, something. Yeah, that, that's basically what I'd have to do. Yeah, I'd have to uh, uh, wait to uh, do the parsing of that include. And I would have to break the program first parsed his files, then it takes, goes through all the jails and says, okay, given this but parse tree I have, you know, I can do one, work on the various substitution because yeah, then it needs to go back and say, oh, but I need to parse more. So how much work? I don't know. I have uh, exploited in the existing parser is that you can define uh, a parameter first and then make immediately in the next line, you can make use of it. Yes. And so, support for basically adding new attributes and expanding them at least line by line is there. So you're doing the include as a pre-processing step right now? No, I'm doing the include in, in the YAC file. So it's, you know, 
It is a so, regular statement parsing step like any other. Okay. I I do not have I do not run a preprocessor. I don't do anything line by line. It's okay. An include looks exactly like a parameter setting, except for it. Okay, you know, so the it only works be because um, variables uh, have a distinctive syntax, and so you can always look up in the symbol table. Uh, so the, the parser has no, and Lexa have no problem going over a variable reference, which is unknown because it's syntactically still a variable re reference, and the parser does not validate the the symbol against the symbol table while parsing. Right, that's post parser. Yeah. And that. Hmm. The problem is the include is processed during the parsing. Yeah, that statement is parsed and then it gets the next statements from the included file. Yep. So that's, you know, hmm. far before any variables have been content, variable contents have been done. Variable contents are per jail, so they cannot be done until I am going through the list of jails, and I cannot go through the list of jails until I have a completely parsed and jail file. That's the problem. But can't you rewrite it in such a way that the include gets preserved as a value, and afterward, you uh, basically treat it as an append? Yeah, that's uh, and that's the tricky part. What do I treat it as? Because, for example, a thing that you would want to do is include something that sets a variable that is used in the file that mm -hmm. did the include. So I cannot parse. I cannot do all the variable settings. At you know, in the beginning, because some of them might depend on the include file. It's uh, there is no um, simple say institution. I I can think of one, but uh, you're probably not uh, going to like it for uh, code smell reasons. And that is um, the following. So let's say your parser uses standard file IO operations. Yeah. And uh, you wrap the file with uh, uh, um, um, F, uh, fun map. So that you get a basically get a file handle, but in reality it's a bunch of uh, callbacks. And what would then happen is that basically your I/O would block, uh, and on a so what happens? You would pass up to the include, the and if a parser tries to look ahead, it would get blocked, and instead your backend code. With just as a new snippet to be put in there, it's thought, yeah, that's uh, it's really uh, fragile. It, it gets ugly thinking about the details of this. I think at this point, the best thing to do is say there are ugly details of this, and I have plans to do it, but I probably want to um, introduce the include feature without this, and then add it later, rather than block on it. Agree. Is there a way that, that you could at least make the jail name available at that point? Do you have that? Uh, no, because once again, you don't have the jail name until you have delineated your jails, which is something that is done with a fully parsed file. Okay, so... So right now, it is just going to have to be pure file name includes, and I, I will work out how to do it, but I'm not sure this call is the right place for it. Okay. Okay, so are the top concerns addressed? It sounds like that's a valuable discussion. Um, uh, so ahead, uh, uh, I, I, do, I do have just one last question on the topic. So the include is literally like the, the way that the CPP works, right? It's basically, no, it's, it's not like you're just basically taking a text from my one place and putting it into another. There is no concept no. of variables. There is no concept, no concept of variables. It is just... You know, it, it has file globbing, but other than that, it is just a path name. It is not dependent on anything else in the file. So, okay, sounds good. And, and it and does the, uh, support relative paths? It does support relative paths uh, relative to the file itself, current file itself? being read. Yeah. Um, in a uh, rather naive way, it merely, uh, if it doesn't start with a slash, it prepends the uh, 
directory part of the previous file name. It doesn't do any real path or anything like that. That makes okay. sense. Probably good. That's actually a very nice solution. Like, you know, you could have the jail.conf include the jail.conf.d and inside the jail.conf, I mean, the jail.conf.d slash root.conf mm -hmm. and inside the root.conf mm -hmm. you can have include everything in here.conf, right? You know, the blob. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a very perfect solution. I think it, it works very beautifully. Uh, yeah, so, but, but, but Jan's question, which I didn't understand the question was that, like you can't use the variable name inside the blob, right? That, that was what yeah. you said. It's not implemented because it's, it's happening yeah. at the processor level, not at the parsing level. Right, not implemented. Okay, okay. Planned, not implemented. Okay, yeah, I, I think it's fine. I think this is an ideal solution, honestly. I mean, I talked about this with Goran as well and... Uh, because uh, my solution, I don't know if you saw that one, which was piping STD into STDN, like dash F dash, you know, <laughs> to the GL utility. It works, by, which I'm using it right now in production, but it's not a nice solution. And Goran's solution of adding it inside the, uh, the, the, the command was a nice solution, but also a complicated one. Um, I think this is really the most beautiful solution that we can have in a short time frame. It, it's, it's, yeah. if, if it gets into 14, it will solve a lot of problems. There's a slightly different idea I've seen and quite like in tools like Ansible, where the configuration file is an executable that gets executed and uh, is expected to write the configuration to standard output. How does that work? I didn't understand. So um, let's say uh, I want to have a dynamic uh, configuration. Okay, a dynamic yeah. configuration. Okay. Which require in, for example, my Ansible, where I want to really define group memberships in some database, which is live and reachable. And instead of requiring me to template this out and then reload the group definition, uh, you can make the group definition uh, a configuration file, make it executable, and Ansible will execute it as and expect it to write out a valid configuration to stand it out. So it just does a P open basically. Oh, isn't that more complicated? No, that's uh, really, it could be as simple as P open, which is libc. Uh, uh, okay. That, that sounds and like you something just... that a tool that runs the jail program could do, but I don't see why every single program that has a configuration file would need to do that. Um, because it allows you to basically, wherever you could put a configuration file, you could can put a script generating a configuration file. Ah, I, I guess the oh. really is how far do we want to go with in-based tools? So that uh, is for, really, it's a really useful feature of Ansible, but um, every SSH time we, does it too. Yeah, that's, that's you can have I a command that, that uh, is true. That's the OFOS key file or something. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm a fan of shipping things that are ready. Yeah, and then Jamie's tool is already there. very useful as is the code with no uh, protection from recursive includes mm -hmm. and only globs. It's already a vast improvement because it allows most common uh, things. And all the other discussion we had the last few minutes was about the esoteric corner cases. Yeah. Uh, and instead of making it more complex to do most of these, why not admit that at some point it's better to have a, not a Turing tar pit, but a Turing complete language. <laughs> yeah, I was actually gonna say that I am afraid of that. Uh, and but this is me putting on my vendor hat, by the way, because I mean I would prefer the base tool to be as basic as it is, and I understand that all jail management softwares out there are using the jail utility. And after doing a lot of POCs in the last couple of weeks, we realized that none of us should not not CBSD, not Bastel, not Jailer, no one should. Uh, the, 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 and today, unfortunately. Uh, uh, but, but the, the Dan is not here. It's like he's using, you know, make jail, muck jail, mm -hmm. which works ideally because it does a very simple thing. It generates a file and it runs the jail command, which is basically every other jail system does, except all of other 
the tools have, you know, fancy whistles. I just added the HCP, Bastel has like dash IP flag, you know, it's it's basically the same thing at the end of the day. I think as jail vendors, we're not fighting over who has the most features. We're fighting over who has the better UX and UI. <laughs> I mean, it, it, functionality wise, it's very, very, very the same. And I love that the base tool is as basic as um, it is. Uh, now, I understand that you have like these very corner cases and I, I don't think, we should have them in mind inside the base jail and then document all of that and then make the jail utility more complex. And like, uh, sure, Ansible is awesome, but I've tried learning it. It took me like six months, you know? It's not a simple thing as it looks like. And there is so uh, I yeah. think if, if, if someone actually needs as, as complex thing with the much corner cases, the ideal solution would be to use uh, the jail system call and implementing your own you know, um, yes and them. no. The problem is you don't want to target the system calls unless you have to. You probably want to target libjail. Well, you know, libjail, yeah, sure. And the other is that as someone using tools like Ansible a lot, my day job, I value tools which allow me to manage them and hook into them without becoming these monstrous tools, but keep it simple. The tool itself, but have escape hatches where I may have to put in the extra work if I need the full flexibility and it shouldn't burden the normal usage. But it's so things like using all the bells and whistles of uh, libucl, for example, puts a burden of all of this configuration into every libucl using tool to support it all which is fine on a modern system from a resource point of view, but now users have to learn this. And if you expect them to really use the advanced features and you have registered your own macros uh, to do things, um, maybe to template things and abstract over the jail parameters so that I could have just have a macro vnet with ePair and it would generate it, that's, and more when I said, yeah, now every user has to deal with this complexity, which is not something you really want. So actually, that's the reason why I wrote my question, by the way, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's you? I only had okay. one question. Yes, sir. Uh, so well, let's wrap up on this one unless it's uh, related to it. Uh, it's not It's not directly related. So if Yeah, so hold that for just up. a second. Let's say, yes. one, a huge thank you to Jamie for this progress. And uh, it sounds like there are a few things to document in the process, like, hey, here's some rough edges, caveats, and future ideas, but it's a definitely a working tool. Are there indeed a few last coding bits before that's good to go? And we should be testing it, everyone? The only coding bit is the, uh, the simple solution to uh, recursion, infinite recursion mentioned, having a, a limit of include file recursion. Other than that, I, I believe it's all coded. Great. Well, that's some a simple, at least a uh, compile unit wide depth limit. Yeah. Yep. If it's oh. really implemented using recursion, uh, a recursive function that uh, works. Well, um, then again, yeah, I think it actually might be using a recursive function. I could just make the stack small enough that the thing blows up. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. Do you want to have a? A setfold handler inspect the stack to find it. What about this? <laughs> no, uh, not really. Well, I don't understand why nice shouldn't be comfortable using GDB on a remote kernel. But uh, <laughs> really, really legit. If you want to have it even cleaner, you could uh, make the uh, stack explicitly managed, allocate an array on the stack uh, for the state to be saved and then push it and have a loop uh, which does the check but yeah recursion is fine so uh, probably so a smaller I, change i didn't understand so oh the the remaining work is limiting the yeah, recursion um, okay if you yeah, yeah exactly just just a little bit of code to add and then i think it's something aside from uh further testing that i could stick in it, it is definitely something i expect to uh make it before the new and improved 14.0 limit how many loop is a too much loop? I mean, is that yeah, what I mean, 32 you said, or what's a good depth? 32 is safe uh, and probably enough 
because more than 30, that would imply that you have a 32 include depth, which is. Yeah. I mean, look at it's this way. more than three or four is going to be a nightmare for a user to debug. I was going to say that. Right. So Running 32 is limits small is... enough to not worry about, big yeah. enough to cancel, handle anything yeah. anybody reasonably wants to do. Yeah. yeah. And if, well, and if we like, get a lot of feedback yeah. saying, I've got a jail yeah. config that has 78 levels, then we could change it. Yeah. So even 32 is already on the low end of shouldn't hurt anyone. And on the low end, how, why would you want to do a no, depth? No. A depth you not, shouldn't. It's not but count, it's a depth. Okay. <laughs> it's a depth, of course. It's a maximum depth, but when you use it as defense against loops, it's only the worst depth you explore it to. So it's the uh, basically the time to error discovery is linear to that. Oh, which reminds me, uh, Jamie, if it's not too much work and if you want, I can work on the same patch because I just noticed this. So if any system has includes, I think that we need something like, you know how we do like Nginx dash T capital and it prints the whole config file after the includes. Uh, That'd be nice. I, yeah. Do, do we cool. have that in the patch? If not, I would love to add it myself. I think I can add it. That shouldn't be that hard. That would be um, for debugging. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't have that in there because the includes okay. are not done at the Lex level. It would take a little bit because I've lost the formatting by then, but I've only lost it a little. I imagine it's something that could be done. Yeah. Okay. And well, I, mean, I mean, let's 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 merge this first, and yeah. then we. Do yeah. It. And then I can take you upon your offer to uh, do that, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as the output is, um, as long as it's a one-to-one -one relationship and would pass to the same, that's also exactly. fine because you only really care about what will I run. Yeah. Yeah. Because because that's like we've had a lot of problems where nginx configs go crazy because people apparently don't know how symlinks works. Uh, but then we end up, you well, know, okay, dash T capital, and then oh, okay, so this is what the actual end result is. And I mean, after we merge this, absolutely, we'll we'll, we'll work on that. I, I think that would be a good good debugging scenario. And uh, if anyone is, knows, so let me understand this. When is the fourteen coming out? I don't know that we have a fixed date anymore. It's well, coming out when they fix Open SSL. Yeah, that's, that's always good. Open that's SSL. Good. It's always open SSL. That's true. Yeah, I remember with twelve. I think with the same thing. Happened. That was the same it's thing. a really um, ugly problem right now. That uh, because of things like PAM and NSS, which use uh, DL open to dynamically open mm -hmm. uh, crypto libraries, even and they pull in open SSL from base into arbitrary ports, and if you have a simple collision there, it uh, will blow up in your face. Uh, even just to check uh, uh, the hash password file data, you pull in the hash algorithm implementation from OpenSSL just to get the cipher. Or even is... check, check it. Hmm? Check the, or even to check the password is valid. Yeah, right? take all the base system PAM and R modules and um, do a check. And the other part is, there are PAM and NSS modules in ports, so you get it, the problem in both directions. Where potentially uh, the base system SSHD is configured to use a PAM module from ports, and that has always worked and has to keep on working. And yeah. So basically the only thing we can do is uh, set the base system to 3.0 and let ports deal with a fallout or make sure nothing from basically evict um, anything which has this uh, kind of trans uh, um, this kind of uh, hull behavior where you get a transitive hull of something uh, has to be uh, refactored and re taken out, so that they rewrite the whole PAM modules and have this tiny little library, which uh, uses a macro to append a prefix so there's no symbol collision and only provides the symbols used by the PAM modules, 
which okay, is doable topic. for things like simple ciphers, but uh, it's totally unfeasible way for uh, yep. Kerberos. There's a very fight that battle here. <laughs> there's a very good thread on the mailing list for people who wish to yes, uh, contribute. Excellent. Yeah. Maybe drop that in there in the notes or something. Okay. Anyway, Antrenig, you had doc yes, questions. Sir. And again, thank you, Jamie. I can't emphasize that enough. Thank you, thank you. Let's not get lost in the weeds, but this is fantastic <laughs> work and so elegant. I appreciate it. Yes. Anyway. Um, so so I, I have I have a two-part question. No, no, two part. I have two questions. The first one is um, currently in our documentation in the handbook, such as you know, the jail chapter. It's so old and so bad. I'm talking like it talks about easy jails. I understand that a lot of people have like, like nostalgia or something to easy jails. I've never touched easy jails. I've never seen easy jails. I don't even know what easy jails does. And they don't work on 14 and 13. And they years. don't work since ever, God knows, you know? So it does it, work. Really? It does work. Yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, a friend of mine still uses it in on thirteen. Okay, well, it's like it's it's like it's like people are still having an emotional attachment to like merge port, port master, merge master, whatever the name <laughs> is, basically. Uh, so yeah, port master. Uh, yes, I think we need a. I think we need an update on this specifically. Oh, we badly do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Specifically, uh, this page or deeper into it. The whole chapter. Oh, there well, is nothing mentioning yeah. VNet. There is nothing mentioning the ability of NetGraph, like ju just the ability. We don't mm. even like. And, NetGraph uh, has, a, has its own chapter. It does. I yeah, think. but we should have a link to it from the jails. Like you can do, you can do the cool things with this other thing over here. Here's a small example. But the problem right. is that there, there are a few good use cases for NetGraph and jails and VNet outside of very advanced automation. Mm. Those things are outdated that you're scrolling, by the way. We don't yes. support CCTL anymore. Huh? The, CCTL, so. the CCTL format is, is considered outdated. Yeah, but it's deprecated. Oh, but yeah, the CRC, supported. apologies. The CRC. Yeah, it's supported, but yeah, it's considered depre deprecated. Yeah. That's, the that's thing with the handbook is not to describe all the options in the man page, is to say it, it, everybody's encountered this. When I started with FreeBSD, I read the, the handbook and I went, okay, these are the things I need to use. That is what people do, and it needs an overhaul. Yeah, so and then it turns out nobody does that. Like, if you're upgrading a jail in 2023, you're using FreeBSD update utility that can update a jail. You know, you're not. Yeah. The, and the, you know, I'm sure if you're compiling from source, the documentation is valid. Otherwise, it's not. So I think we have a massive problem here. I don't know how we work on the docs. By the way, like over the years, I've sent like l small one-line patches of typos. I've never rewritten a whole big thing. I don't know what the process is. If anyone knows. I think this will be the biggest value that we can give to the community right now okay. is just, you know, figuring out what information is missing. How deep do we want to go? Because ideally, I, I would love to have like a copy paste of my blog post in a better English, obviously, not, 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 not an Armenian English, which is like copy paste this or run it. You're happy, you know, like something like that for the users. With an, with an you know an explanation of course so that's my idea is like okay i read this i copy pasted it i ran it it works that's it uh, we um, something are yes go on i'm quite allergic to a copy paste tutorial documentation because it um because it's so easy ends up with people basically copy and pasting magic incantations which become a barrier to learning anything beyond the copy paste snippets. Thank you, Peter Hanstein. Um, that all said, uh, I personally have a sort of niggling feeling that we do not want to go with the third party tools because that's a very, very long slippery slope. But as you pointed out, Antronig, between SysRC and FreeBSD updates supporting jail, we should be clear as day on the in base tools. Yes, and oh, yes. I am dabbling with making a pull request over the public GitHub repo. And how about this? On a future call, perhaps the next one, we each take a moment in advance to see what we think is truly broken. And we have a bit of a hackathon where one of us just shares our screen, makes the clone of the repo, and we dive in there and see how far we get, or at least map it out in some form, either in a, a Google Doc exactly as we're doing, just copy, paste, and bang it up. Docathon. Docathon, <laughs> exactly. So uh, let's not 
have another 10 years of complaining that it's out of date. So uh, your thoughts? One of the nice things is that uh, the documentation team moved to ASCII doc to from the old uh, yep. XML infected tooling. So now it's just a slightly more advanced than uh, Markdown. Markdown uh, and a lot nicer for non-trivial documents because yep. you have a bit more formal syntax, but not enough to get an array of just writing it down and adding the markup afterward. Um, Michael, your point is about, I think instead of like showing the, like inside the handbook, instead of doing, damn it, I forgot the language English. Um, instead of uh, writing chapters on the third party jail orchestrators, I think the only thing that we need is like links. Like here are some third party orchestrators yeah, that are active end today. Of the chapter, here are all their alternatives. And because maintaining exactly. that would be a nightmare for not yeah, even maintaining absolutely. the basic information. Exactly. That's just criminal. Exactly. So one of the things uh, which is really missing is that a lot of the uh, handbook still doesn't embrace SOSRC, so uh, which just, is. Okay. Let's make a list right here and now. SysRC is not well covered. FreeBSD update is not well covered. What else? Uh, FreeBSD you know, update is covered. Well, at, in, with regard to jails, in jails is, not. is needed. Uh, yeah, like, oh, wait. the OS release or current running version argument should be documented, yes. Um, jail, 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 chapter. Uh, OS release. I'm sorry, what's OS release? Um, it's one of the, the problem is that FreeBSD update asks, uh, tries to use uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to detect the running version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then if you're running, let's say 13.1 on 13.2, it will say, sorry, but you're not running 13.2, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, but you should. So um, FreeBSD update fails. Yep, yep, yep. yep and yep, you yep, yep. there's a documented flag in the main page to Override it, or you can uh, run the old jail using by providing basically the uh, release string and the release ABI number. Put so that in, and we then we have a solution uh, here, Jan. Let's just get this list down. Yep. yep. Bang, bang. What other stands you. out? And I can bring up the chapter again. Oh, there it is. Oh no. Package. We should add package to this list. Package yes. is jail aware. We don't mention how to use it. It's annoyingly fiddly. What's package? Hmm? Package. Package. Well, like package. Or... Yeah, yeah, we, we don't mention it. You've got to, you've got to divine that the package utility has specific incantations for jails. There's three possibilities. That's actually a good point. Maybe we just need a list of all the utilities yeah. that support the jail command. You know, like oh, package. That alone is an audit uh, all its own, which is good. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. List but it's a useful tools. one uh, to uh, maintain such a list of jail aware tools in base. Yeah. Every, like, so the, your base out. Values, I like that. That's good. Um, uh, everything from Socstat to PS, Socstat, PS. I, I think the list is very long, uh, by the way. Good. Uh, well, this is similar to the LibXO audit I did, and I'm all for exactly. it because people don't, anyone who's like, oh, this one utility does it. Well, hey, by the way, a dozen utilities now do it. So let's see, Socstat, Socstat, PKG, bring it on. What else? Not IF config and uh, route. Mm -hmm. <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> like last week or something. Thank you. IF <laughs> config okay. and route are going to get it soon. Uh, there are some more utilities, as far as I remember. Let me check. Um, Auto correct. One of the biggest arguments about the handbook, and I missed it, is that is that so apparently Easy Jail does work fine, but I don't know any newcomer who gets recommended that. And I would Except if they would just read the handbook. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> like people don't read the handbook, then what do they do? Like Google out of nowhere? Know, ask on no, Twitter. They uh, yeah. look for blog posts, YouTube videos, yep. Reddit posts, tutorials to copy and paste from because they just don't assume that cool. anyone provides documentation. Anything else for the list? Oh, so it's 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 a Linux problem, not a <laughs> documentation <laughs> problem. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and um, uh, what do we call those now? You know that there are uh, I, I can't remember what it's called. Jail aware file systems. 
Yeah, JL, uh, the uh, ZFS is JL aware file system. Yeah, yeah there's like TempFS is, is, I think, uh, the dev file system definitely is. LSVFS is, I think, the tool you want to run. Yeah, that sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah. What's the tool? Punch it in the chat. LSVFS, it lists the file systems known to the kernel. So the file system types like, and the uh, procfs is jailware the devfs is mm. uh nullfs there is a patch which is i think didn't make it in or there's a ccdl to make nfs claim to be jailware because you supposedly it's not dangerous that was, yeah. was the recent oh. change and it's not jailable utilities okay um and uh, kill sorry this is this is output of lfs here sorry Apparently, Pogrep and cool. Pakil, and uh, I, I so think it uses as well. Linproc, as you have a few more kernel modules loaded than I have. Cool. Yeah. And when did we add DNCTL? Uh, what? When did we add DNCTL? I'm sorry, I'm just looking for the term jail in the man pages. DNCTL, it's like dominant. Oh, dominant. Okay, never mind. Yeah, never mind. it's a. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been broken out so that you can yeah, so have done that configuration I mean, without um, PF as well. Absolutely. Was it split out of IPFW so that you can use it without loading IPFW if you only need dummy net and PF or something? I, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. Because all more uh, reason yeah. to document it. Okay, so. Building up that list is handy. Uh, just using some time, maybe half a you know half of these meetings or something would be a great step forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about the most reward for the most you know whatever effort. Keep in mind, by, by, by the according way, to I, Michael I just, W. Lucas, he had I to write realized... like, all his storage books before writing the jail book. He built all of that up to get there. So it's it's a non-trivial topic, but let's yeah. see what we can do. Go ahead. I just realized what you can do with jails is non trivial, but getting a jail running shouldn't be hard. Correct. Okay, Antonik, what you got? I just realized that technically speaking, the utility JLS is jail aware. You know, just technically hey, speaking, JLS is jail aware. <laughs> I think it was one of the first features added. Exact. So it's J exec. Yeah. Yes. Shocker. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, of course, of course, you will have to list them. It's just <laughs> you don't think about it. Correct. Arrived in five point two, which I, which is like why I'm here. <laughs> that got me here. Anyway. Oh shit! Was I even born? Okay. I was like ten years old. Okay, I think we're good. That's yeah. motivating, and this is a, a very good use of this the, these calls. Just get it done. Make it happen. Yeah. Stop looking yeah. bad when people look so at the handbook next week, and think, oh. Next week, Docathon. Next week, Docathon. Who here is not English, their native language? There's me, Muhammad. There is Jan. Jan. Okay. And we have we have Americans, we have New Zealanders, Kiwis, technically. And uh, okay, well, I will ask some more people to join. And hopefully we'll, we'll get it more done. Uh, unfortunately, the language barrier is awful because I've I've always tried to work on the docs, but it's written it's written in such a good way that you're like my high school grade of English writing is not worth it in here, you know. We're and, here to help. Um, exactly. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully. You need okay. an editor to go over it. Sorry. You, you need, need an, an editor, editor to revise it. <laughs> cool. And we have Jamie to review the authenticity of what the heck we come up with. Anyway, other topics? Yes, last one. Yeah. Um, so yesterday I was playing with a newsletter software called ListMonk, which also provides binaries for FreeBSD and OpenBSD. I've been using it for more than 24 hours, which says a lot about Ooh. software that I use. Uh, I'm very happy about it. I was wondering if we can move our um, meetings from Michael's personal email address to a newsletter and also put the newsletter form on the website. 
uh, jail.freebsd.am. Sorry, we couldn't get the .org one. Uh, <laughs> jail.freebsd.am. So anyone can put their email and get notifications about our uh, meetings, basically. I have been very, very, very busy and didn't have the time, and I'm so sorry about that, to update the website itself. But I will do that hopefully this weekend. So yeah, I was gonna say if we should, if 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 you think it's are not you volunteering worth it, to host it? That's a key question. Yes, sir. I okay. I am hosting my own stuff, so it will be just part of that. It will be on bsd.am. Oh, and listmonk. What you gave it to me? Let me, let me link that in okay. on text. Uh, if we're dog fooding it, yes. Yes, we're dog fooding it. Okay. And then it what's the like listmonk cool. address? Like listmonk.org. It's in listmonk. the chat. Uh, is it? Oh, the listmonk yeah. listmonk dot app. Dot app. Okay. Yes, it's very good. I'm very happy about it. My only thing, the only thing that is, I didn't like is that it doesn't have multi tenancy. Like I can't have multiple users and stuff. But I'm okay with sharing access okay. to anyone else. Like with that again. Huh? Isn't that what Jails could do for us? There yeah, there's only one tool that would make um. Yeah, make compartmentalizing software for multi-tenant solutions. Yeah, funny <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, know, Antrenig, right? is it running in a jail or not? It has yes, to it is. Good, okay, yes, well. It it's running with jail with jailer, so. <laughs> I can say, the problem is that it has to uh, be integrated with your mail setup. I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess, since my mail server is working fine, I can have multi-tenancy in the sense, you know, we can have newsletter.freebsd.im, newsletter.freebsd.bsd.im. What I mean, like, I can just, I can just have multiple deployments of the same configuration. Okay, uh, I'm all for it. And everyone, the moment Antonig mentioned that software, I realized out of all the stuff we discussed, this is the most tangible use to your average user and your average like business owner rather than like ZFS optimization and jail mm -hmm. multi-tenancy. It's like, oh, an alternative to MailChimp. I get it. My wife gets it. So that's a Everyone good find to Antonig and thanks for packaging that up. Go ahead. Everyone wants it apparently. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Any other topics? I am happy to call it short uh, Available as part? Uh, no, not yet. I am working on it. Uh, I've been working on it since yesterday. Hopefully by the weekend, I'll, I'll have it submitted. Cool. And then Please hopefully take... someone merges it. Yeah, I'll do that. You, yeah, you do the work. I'll take the credit at the end. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was locally here already because I had a look at it a few months ago. Um, yeah, happy to help on that. Um, cool. Just quickly on, on docs. So yeah. last year at BSDCon, I did this jails tutorial. And my intention for that was always to fold as much as possible of it into the handbook, assuming it's correct. That's a, that's a different question. Um, and I would be happy to do to do that or to use it as the base for this. Um, what form is it in? Pretty much targeted from the point of view of someone who knows a reasonable amount about FreeBSD, but nothing in detail. And it should get them from zero to everything. Um, I will put the links in the document in a minute. Yeah, throw them in, and if that's a starting point, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to take the credit for Antonix Port, we can take the credit for the chapter ripping off your tutorial. So. Sure. Okay, so if these like three topics are to happen, that's magnificent pro progress forward. So great work, Jamie. We can get those docs up to date. I personally think just a simple fast forward to now audit of what tools support jail is very helpful because it's often more than you think. Anyway, last thoughts. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those links else? are coming in. Well, I've got breakfast on the table, family in town and a girl graduating tomorrow. So uh, I'm calling it at 1051. I'll hang around for just a second more. And I wish you a fantastic week and weekend. Like, subscribe, and all of these like, stuff, please. Exactly. Slam that like button. <laughs> uh, okay, UTC folk. What time is it, UTC? Five. Uh, okay. Take care, everyone. 5 p.m.